Good morning, everybody. All of you. you know, I'm Diane Gisman. I'm one of the Living in America teachers and a member of the Hitchcock Christmas Coordinating Team. And half of, half of both organizations. And it's so exciting to have so many of you joining the local area from around the nation, like across the world. And thank you particularly to those of you in Asia who are staying up so terribly late to, to join our, us virtually. Uh, just okay. note before we start, the entire service was pre-recorded following COVID precautions. And I am on the church sanctuary. For those of you that don't know, we had a major snowstorm. Us would have been in the church sanctuary today. What you see behind me is a virtual background uh, from the Zoom function. Today, we are so delighted to have our church staff participating in the service. I'm going to introduce to you Catherine Pater, who's a, an ordained minister. She joined Hitchcock in April as Hitchcock's associate pastor, and she will be leading us today in the call to worship. Someday, I hope many of you will get to meet her in person. The Reverend Bill Weisenbach is a retired minister. He's Hitchcock's parish associate, which means he's a volunteer who does a lot of work with Hitchcock. And Bill will be saying our benediction today. And the Reverend Pete Jones, many of you have met Pete. He's been with us for about four years as Hitchcock's senior pastor. And he has a special meditation for all of us. And as always, the Dr. John King, Minister of Music at Hitchcock has coordinated all of the music for the service. And we thank the staff for all of their support and participation. Thank you too for so many of the Living in America students who have taken, are taking part in today's service. They've pre-recorded all of this for us in a very safe environment. And particularly to Steve Taylor, who's done so much technical work and all of the editing that's making this virtual service possible. Uh, we, Steve will mute everybody during the service, uh, but do sing out loudly, even if you're all by yourself when the carols come along, because it's lots of fun to join in with people, even if you can't hear them. And when the service ends, I hope you will stay on for a time of socializing and we will create some random breakout rooms for you to do this. So now sit back and enjoy the service.
Friends, thank you for joining us for this service of worship. You will be muted through the service, but go ahead and sing or read along as you feel comfortable as we go along. Please join me now in our call to worship. Sing to the Lord all the world. Know that the Lord is God. He made us and we are his people. The Lord is good and his love lasts forever. From Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. At that time, Emperor Augustus ordered a census to be taken throughout the Roman Empire. When this first census took place, Quirinius was the governor of Syria. Everyone then went to register himself, each to his own hometown. Joseph went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to the town of Bethlehem in Judea, the birthplace of King David. Joseph went there because he was a descendant of David. He went register with Mary, who was promised in marriage to him. She was pregnant. And while they were in Bethlehem, the time came for her to have her baby. She gave birth to her first son, wrapped him in cloth, and laid him in a manger, 
there was no room for them to stay in the inn.
There were some shepherds in that part of the country who were spending the night in the field, taking care of their flocks. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone over them. They were terribly afraid, but the angel said to them, Don't be afraid, I am here with good news for you, which will bring great joys to all the people. This very day in David's town, Eusebio was born, Christ the Lord, and this is what will prove it to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great army of heaven's angels appear with the angel, singing praise to God. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those with whom he is pleased. When the angel went away from them, back into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and saw the baby lying in the manger. When the shepherds saw him, they told them, what the angel had said about the child. All who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said. Mary remembered all these things and thought deeply about them. The shepherd went back, singing praises to God for all they had heard and seen. It has been just as the angel had told them. Well, hello there. It is so good to see all of you and to be a part of the Hitchcock Living in America Advent Service. It is always such a joy to gather with the Living in America family. It is such a treat each and every year to see all that you come up with, to hear the scriptures read, to hear the music played. This year, of course, is a little bit different, but it doesn't change the fact that we are called to come together and to celebrate with one another. In the Christian faith, during the season of Advent, we like to light candles. And we light those candles as a reminder that God's light is always coming into the world, that there is no darkness that is too dark that it would overcome it. During the season of Advent, we light five candles, but the four are the first four weeks of Advent, and those are the candles of hope and of love and of joy and of peace. And then, of course, we light the fifth, which is the Christ candle itself on Christmas Eve. I'd like to focus for just a moment on that first candle, the candle of hope. My friends, we are called to have hope in this world. We are called to hear the words from the Gospel of Luke as we just heard them read, where the shepherds are out in the field, and suddenly the angels appear. And the first thing that the angels say to the shepherds is, Do not be afraid, for we are bringing a message of great joy. Over and over and over again in the scriptures, we are reminded to not be afraid, to be expectant, expectant, to know that there is something good that is to come, to be sure in our faith that God is always bringing something new. God's light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. And that's really what the season of Advent is all about. It is about preparing ourselves to be filled up with the kind of joy that we must be given in this Christmas season. Now, I know that we have lived through difficult days in 2020. It has been hard for all of us, and we have been separated one from another. We have been isolated in our own ways. I am sure that many of you were not able to see family as you intended and have been separated from the ones that you love. But still, we are told to be filled with hope. For God is always bringing a message of newness. Prepare yourselves for the days, it says. 
Prepare yourselves for the day when God will come into this world and break forth like light in the midst of darkness. It is as if you walk into a space that is just covered in darkness and suddenly someone flips on the switch and there is light all around. That is the kind of expectation that we are supposed to have, that we are supposed to be filled up with hope for that kind of an experience, especially, I think, in this Advent season. We know that good things are to come in this world. We are overjoyed by the fact that we have heard about vaccines, that we have doctors and nurses who are working so hard, that we have scientists that are working so hard to come up with a way for us to beat this pandemic that is happening in our world so that we can once again be together. Our hope is sure. Our faith reminds us that there is nothing in life or in death that can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so in the Christian faith, the traditions that we have around Christmas, putting up the Christmas tree and hanging up lights and decorating with poinsettias, all of that is for the purpose of filling us with hope for days that are to come. In the Advent season, we celebrate the joy that is given to us in knowing, the joy that is given to us in being assured that no matter what happens in this life, that we are never, ever alone. That is the message of Advent, that God is always coming into this world to make all things new. Again and again and again and again, God comes to bring light. And our job, of course, is to share that light with all those that we encounter. And so this Advent, this Christmas, this holiday season for each and every one of you, regardless of what it is that you believe, my prayer for all of us is that we will be filled up with hope, that we will hear the message of the angels to the shepherds to not be afraid and to expect that there is something good, that something with joy is coming into the world for all of God's people. It is that kind of hope that I pray that you are filled with this day. Merry Christmas to all of you. Happy holidays to all of you. Might you truly be blessed with the knowledge that you are not alone, that there is nothing in this life for us to be afraid of. And may we all be joyful in knowing that here at Living in America, here at Hitchcock Presbyterian Church, or wherever it is that you find yourself around the world, that we are one human family brought together for the purpose of giving glory to God, and of sharing light with all those that we encounter. Merry Christmas to all of you this day. God bless you all. Stay well, stay safe, until we can come back together again. Amen.
comfort that God shepherds you in wisdom, gathers you to his side and holds you close, never to release you to harm. For this is the season of mercy and joy. So now go into the world doing what the Lord requires, living with kindness and justice, walking your path humbly with God, then you will find yourself blessed. Go in peace. Amen.